Lord, we thank you. The one that makes us to be in his presence today and not on the mortuary ground, say thank you. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Say, Say, Allah be thy name. Say thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we thank God. I want us to open our mouths and pray like this. Say, the resurrection power of God. Visit us in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of God. Visit us in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of God. Visit us in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of God. Visit us in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of God. Visit us in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of God. Visit us in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of God. Visit us in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of God. Visit us in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anointing for new hope. Anointing for new life. Fall upon me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say angels of testimonies. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Angels of testimony. Visit me in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, the power that breaks yoke. The power of God that breaks yoke. Break my yoke in today's service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God that breaks yoke. Break my yoke into this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God that breaks yoke. Break my yoke into this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God that breaks yoke. Break my yoke into this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God that breaks yoke. Break my yoke into this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God that breaks yoke. Break my yoke into this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God that breaks yoke. Break my yoke into this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God that breaks yoke. Break my yoke into this service. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, O heavens over to this service. Ephrata. In the mighty name of Jesus. O heavens over to this service. Ephrata. In the mighty name of Jesus. O heavens over to this service. Ephrata. In the mighty name of Jesus. Who ever is over to this service? Ephrata, in the mighty name of Jesus. Who ever is over to this service? Ephrata, open in the mighty name of Jesus. Ephrata, in the mighty name of Jesus. Who ever is over to this service? Ephrata, in the mighty name of Jesus. Who heavens over to this service? 
Ephrata, in the mighty name of Jesus, who ever so about this service, Ephrata, in the mighty name of Jesus, who ever so about this service, Ephrata, in the mighty name of Jesus, who ever so about this service, Ephrata, in the mighty name of Jesus, who ever so about this service, Hopun, in the mighty name of Jesus, who ever so about this service, Hopun, in the mighty name of Jesus, who ever so about this service, Hopun, in the mighty name of Jesus, who ever so about this service, Hopun, in the mighty name of Jesus, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, Father, we thank you for today's service. God, we thank you for allowing us to say the last Sunday in March 2024. Father, we thank you that we are in your presence and we are not on the hospital bed. Daddy, we thank you that we are not consumed. Daddy, we thank you that we are not in the mortuary. Daddy, we thank you for your grace for allowing us to gather among believers, among like minds. Father, to you all that glory shall be in the mighty name of Jesus. God, as we have come to worship in today's service, as we have come to adore your glorious name in today's service, Father Lord, we will not go home empty-handed in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we will not go home the same way we came in the mighty name of Jesus. God, you shall renew us afresh in the mighty name of, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, if there is anything in our life that needs the resurrection hand of God, in today's service, your resurrection power shall visit it in the mighty name of Jesus. We soak ourselves in the blood of Jesus. God, the angels of blessing assigned for today's service, they will not depart without delivering their blessings to us in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. As we are about to go into our Sunday school class for today, which we also call Search the Scripture, Father, we pray that you will speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that as we discuss today, the light that is in our in your world, we illuminate our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You may be seated. It is time for our Bible study today, which we also call Search the Scriptures. Today we will continue with the Bible character, which we began about two weeks ago. We started talking about these Bible characters. In case you are just joining us for the first time today, the central theme of our study has been the study of Bible characters. And we have taken a number of Bible characters in the Bible. We have been talking about them. We have been looking at their strengths, their accomplishments, their failures. And we have been drawing lessons from their lives and applying it to our own lives. So today we will continue with Barnabas. Barnabas. The Bible describes him as the encourager. Let's pick up our Bible as we go to the memory verse that we have for this study. Acts chapter 11, verse 23 to 24. Acts chapter 11, verse 23 to 24. And I read, Who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart, they will cleave unto the Lord. Verse 24. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. The person being talked about in that memory verse is a man called Barnabas. And that is the person we will be talking about. Of course, in our discussion, we have a number of text passages which we will use to support our discussion today. What I would do before we go to the call of our discussion today is doing a little bit of expository on those Bible passages. The first one is Acts chapter 9, verse 27. Acts chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says, But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostle and declared unto 
then how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Now, to give us a little bit of context into that chapter 9 so that that verse can make sense to us. In chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, we have the story of the conversion of Saul. If we all remember that Saul was somebody whom the devil was using to persecute Christians, to persecute the church, to kill Christians. In Acts chapter 9, as he was going to Damascus, near Damascus, Paul encountered Jesus. And after that encounter, Paul was converted. And he stayed with the disciples in Damascus. And he started teaching and preaching in synagogues. After a while, he moved to Jerusalem. But when he got to Jerusalem, Paul could not integrate into the community of believers. And the reason is because the believers did not accept him into their fold. Because they are finding it hard to believe that a man who used to persecute the church has given his life to Jesus. But one man called Barnabas, who is the man we are talking about today, acts as an arbitrator and brought Saul to the disciples. So Barnabas gave Saul what I would call a soft landing. I remember my years in the high school. Then, I used to be part of the gang that gives newcomer what I would call the baptism of fire. You know when a newcomer comes to the class, so we bully them. Instead of welcoming them to the class, we give them a hard landing. And that continues until that newcomer eventually develops courage to develop or to defend himself or herself. And that's why sometimes I used to tell family who have just relocated and they are concerned that their child or children is not welcome in their school. I often tell them it's nothing to worry about. It's just a matter of time. You know, the situation the, his classmates or our classmates are playing is what we call the newcomer's game. And with time, once they develop courage, they will be able to resist and they will all become friends. So Barnabas gave Saul a soft landing. Now let's bring this home. In the church where you are, in your place of work, in your neighborhood, what role do you play when new people come around? How do you welcome them into the church? Are you part of the people that make them to feel welcome? Or you are part of the gang that make life miserable for them? So let us check our acts so that we do not consciously or unconsciously be part of the group of people that do not give people a warm welcome when they come into our community, into our church, into our midst. Another Bible verse is Acts chapter 15 verse 39. In Acts chapter 15 verse 39, the Bible made us to understand that there was a contention between Barnabas and Paul. So Paul, who used to be Saul, had a disagreement with Barnabas over a man that is called Mark. During the second missionary journey of Paul, Barnabas wanted to take Mark with them. But Paul disagreed because Mark deserted them. If you go to Acts chapter 13, verse 13, when they were on the missionary journey then, Mark decided to leave the, the group. The Bible did not record the exact reason why Mark decided to leave. But when you put a number of passages or Bible verses together in Acts, we can come to the conclusion that John probably left one due to the fact that he was homesick or maybe he resents the change in leadership. He 
became healed or he was unable to withstand the rigor of missionary work. But that aside, Paul accused Mark of lacking in courage. So there was a disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. And that shows us one thing, that even in the body of Christ, no matter how close we may be, we will still have disagreements. But in the midst of our disagreement, we should allow God to walk through our conflict and disagreement. Believers may not always agree, but problems can be solved by agreeing to disagree, by letting God do his work and his will. So Paul and Barnabas, even despite their disagreement, did not quit the church. They did not take steps that will hinder the work of God. So that shows us the kind of man that Barnabas is. And I think this is a positive trait that we can take away from him. That we will have disagreements. But how do we handle our disagreements in the house of God? How do we handle our disagreements in our marriage, in our family? Praise God. That's why the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 18. That wisdom is better than the weapons of war. So another Bible reference is Acts chapter 4, verse 36. We are talking about the Bible character called Barnabas. Barnabas is the man we are talking about. And we are trying to take away the qualities, the attributes, the good things in the life of this man. Acts chapter 4, verse 36. In Acts chapter 4, verse 36 to 37, the Bible made us to understand that Barnabas was a giver. He gave physically, spiritually, financially, and emotionally. And I want you to objectively ask yourself this question. Have you given everything in the house of God? Have you given everything in the Lord's vineyard. Or probably you are saying, well, I'm not a pastor. Neither am I the general overseer. So what is my own problem? I want you to tell you, I want you to know something today. What you give is what you will get. Barnabas gave everything. And I believe this is one of the reasons we are talking about him today. Another Bible reference which we will use in studying or talking about this man Barnabas is 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6, here we have Paul still talking about the man Barnabas. You know earlier, I said there was a disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. But yet they did not allow this disagreement to hinder the work of God. Because if you look at the subsequent Bible references that we are looking into, it made us to understand that at every point, Paul was still referring to this man called Barnabas. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, here Paul was still talking about himself and Barnabas. And what Paul was saying concerning himself and Barnabas is that they gave up their right and their freedom to do the work of God. Now let me add a caveat to this. I am not saying we should neglect our wives, children, homes, career. But what I am saying is that we should be ready to make sacrifice. When it comes to service in the Lord's vineyard. There are times we are looking for people to do one thing or the other in the body of Christ. There are times we are asking for volunteers. I believe that if you are a believer, you should not be expecting another round of salmon before you volunteer to do these things. Release and spend yourself doing your father's business. I 
And I can assure you that the blessing that you will get will be beyond what you can imagine. I can tell you that I'm a living testimony to that. Barnabas spent himself for the Lord. Another Bible reference is Galatians chapter 2 verse 1. Here Paul was still talking about Barnabas again. And that gives us a question I want us to reflect about. What kind of testimonies will people say about you? What kind of testimonies are we going to hear about you in the church where you worship? In the community where you belong? What kind of comment will your objective friends give about you? I understand sometimes people may say what they want to say due to their personal issues that they have with a person. But overall, people should have a good report about us. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 9, which is another Bible reference that we'll be using as we discuss about this man called Barnabas. Here we have the Bible recorded that due to the pedigree of Barnabas, people were willing to give him responsibility, to give him tasks, task to do. Can I ask you as a believer, can the church commit things into your hand? Can we trust things into your hand? Can we give you a task and we'll be at peace? Or when we give you task, you find a way to return it back to the church, giving every reason why that task cannot be accomplished. Then finally, we have Colossians chapter 4 verse 10. Here we have Paul talking about this man called Barnabas again. Paul sent a greeting to Barnabas during his third missionary journey. And when I was reflecting on this, this posed another question to my mind, which I will put across to you. Can we miss you or remember you when you are not around? You see, the kind of energy that you radiate during your presence, wherever you are, will either leave a good taste and a sweet smell or a bad taste and a bitter odor when you depart. So ask yourself, how do I want to be remembered in the community where I have lived or I'm living when I live, in the church where I'm serving, in the midst of my friends, in the community of the believer, Paul constantly remembered Paul, Barnabas, because of the good energy that Barnabas radiated when they were together. So these Bible passages, Colossians 4.10, Galatians 2.1, 1 Corinthians 9.6, Acts chapter 4, verse 36, are all the references which I will be using as we discuss about this man that is called Barnabas. Now, let us go to the strengths and accomplishments of Barnabas. Last week, our teacher started talking about this and he mentioned a few things about the strengths and accomplishments of Barnabas. And we will continue from that place today. One of the strengths of Barnabas is that Barnabas is somebody that we can describe as an inspirer. He inspire people. When Paul, who used to be Saul, became a Christian, you know I said it earlier, the community of believers were finding it hard to accept him into their fold. In fact, at a point, Paul had to go back to his hometown and he lived there for 10 years. But this man called Barnabas went to visit him and brought him out and encouraged him and inspired him. In the church where you serve, 
Are you inspiring others to step into leadership? Are you inspiring others to grow in their journey of faith? Are you encouraging them? Brother, sister, have you done foundational class? Why don't you do it? Have you done discipleship class? Why don't you do it? Why don't you do one of the schools that we have in this ministry? Why don't you volunteer to be a teacher? I will encourage you. I will support you. I will work with you. Barabbas was able to do that effectively for Paul. And that's why we are talking about him today. And when you are somebody that can inspire people to do things, you will be in a position of influence. Influencing people for Christ. Influencing people to serve so that they can be blessed. Brothers and sisters, I will encourage us not to be discouraged. Let us inspire others to do good work. And let us desist from consciously or unconsciously running people down by our body language, by the words of our mouths. Remember, whatsoever you sow, the same you will reap. What other accomplishment and strength can we see from this man called Barnabas? The Bible recorded and described him as a missionary. Barnabas had a good reputation among the apostles. That's why when he was moving from places to places, anytime he appears in the community of believers, they are willing to hand over things to him, to give him tax to do. You know, sometimes I find it very interesting when you are a believer and you get to the community of believers and you are sitting down in the church and you are still waiting for the pastor to come and encourage you to serve. It means that person has not gone far in his journey. In fact, right from day one, you should be the person to volunteer, to do things, to get things around, not to impress anybody, not to register your arrival, but to show that, you know what, where I used to be, I know what it means to do my father's business. This is where I am now, and I want to continue to do my father's business. And that's what we call being proactive in our father's vineyard. So Barnabas was a missionary. Anywhere he goes, he serves, he carry out his missionary work. He was bringing new converts into the church. The Bible says through him, the church was daily increasing. Are you serving? Are you bringing people in into the body of Christ? Are you bidding, bringing people into the Christian fold? Let us remember that we have a spiritual responsibility to carry out effective service in, the, in our Father's house. Now, this now takes me to the failure and weaknesses of Barnabas. Like we all know, man will always have successes and there will always be failure. The failure does not mean that generally that Barnabas has failed. No, he didn't fail. But there are sometimes I will have shortcomings. You will have shortcomings. The reason God has put these things into our life is for us to totally and continually depend on him. And most importantly, for us to draw lessons from these failures from these setbacks. And that's the same thing we want to draw from this man called Barnabas. The Bible though describes him as an encourager. One of the failures and weaknesses of Barnabas was that Barnabas the encourager stayed alone from the Gentile believers in Antioch for the fear of certain Jews believers until Paul publicly corrected 
you know sometimes we believe that for the kind of body language that somebody has given us in a group in the church I just want to keep my head cool I just want to go to church just do the classic thing and just go back home no like I said the church is an open world you have not come there because of any man or woman therefore no man or woman can intimidate or suppress anybody from expressing his God's giving gifts and we should not put ourselves in that condition whereby we say oh because of what is happening I will just run away I will just stand alone I know situations things may happen that can cause us to think along that line I have personally experienced it too but we should develop the mental strength to come out of that kind of a thought and let it be known at the back of our mind that why am I here? Am I here because of this group leader? Am I here because of pastor? No, I am here firstly because I want to serve my father, secondly because I desire blessings and thirdly because I want to make it to heaven. And once we have that thought at the back of our mind, no matter the opposition, no matter the discouragement, no matter the frustration, you keep on doing what you are doing excellently with all the gifts that God has given to you. Praise God. What other lessons can we draw from Barnabas aside from this failure and weakness? One, you do not have to be famous to be effective in God's kingdom. Let me tell you something. A lot of people that are actively interceding, praying for the church, doing things together, putting plans together in any living church, people do not see them. So if you are one of the people that think, well, I am doing a lot in this church, I am doing a lot in the body of Christ, I have not been appreciated, people need to see me, then I think such kind of an idea needs to be taken over our mind. That person needs a bit of reorientation. You do not need to be famous to be active in the kingdom. Barnabas was not famous as Paul or Peter. But if you ask this man called Paul, he cannot stop mentioning the name of Barnabas. Barnabas was not known like Timothy, like John. But without any doubt, we can read from the Bible that he played an important role in the early church. Therefore, my words of encouragement to us is, let us set aside the gratitude, the appreciation that we will receive from man. Let's do everything we can do to advance the kingdom of God. And God will continue to bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, let's bow down our hearts as we begin to reflect on the discussion we have today. I want us to take away lessons from this man and apply it to our lives. For adventure, you have been discouraged in the body of Christ. I want this man, Barnabas, to serve as an encouragement to you. Therefore, I want you to pray that, Father, heal me of every injury. Heal my heart so that I can become proactive I can resume my service in your vineyard. Maybe people have discouraged you by the words of their mouth. Pray today that Father, give me the spirit of grace to be able to withstand every form of discouragement. I want you to pray.
In Jesus' name we are praying. I want us to rise up as we say this prayer. Anything in me that is entering the gifts of God to manifest in my life, come out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that is in me, entering the gift of God from manifesting, come out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Out now in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe we are praying. Anything that is in my life, entering the gift of God from manifesting, come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out now in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe we are praying out now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I receive the spirit of grace and service. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it now. It takes receiving that spirit to be proactive. To be able to resist every form of discouragement. When you are serving in the Lord's vineyard, I receive that spirit today in the name of Jesus. The spirit of grace and service. Father, we ask for the spirit of grace and service. That you will give it to us today in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Father Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the lessons that you have made us to see and to hear from this man called Barnabas. Lord, we pray that as we have heard and received this teaching, that the seed of this teaching will not die in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for anyone who needs healing and restoration from anywhere they may have been injured through comments that, Lord, you will heal them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that they will receive the courage, the grace to keep serving in your vineyard in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. We are now going into our prayer session, which we call Alone with God. This is the time for our personal prayer under this collective corporate anointing. Since the beginning of this month, our prayer team has been praying against the power of Pharaoh. Praying against the power of Pharaoh. In case you have not been with us since we started this prayer topic, I believe that today offers you the opportunity to tap into this corporate anointing and pray along with us prayers under this thing. And I believe that as you lift up your voice to pray, the God that answered by fire who answer you speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. In our last series of prayer, I've taken time to talk about this prayer topic. But for the sake of those joining us for the first time in this prayer topic today, I will just mention one or two things about this prayer topic. Praying against the power of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is any situation that does not want a man to progress, to advance. The name Pharaoh is used to describe the king of Egypt in the Bible. And then the king of Egypt are regarded as gods. Therefore, it means that there is a spirit that is behind any personality with that name. That same spirit operated in the lives of pharaohs. And the same spirit is still operating now. And it's behind a number of spiritual challenges that man is going through. And therefore we are taking a spiritual step to terminate the activities of such powers in our lives, in our career, in the lives of our children, in our business in our academics today 
Therefore, as we begin to pray, I want you to cry with passion. Pray from the depths of your heart. Cry like a man who is ready to have a change of situation. And as you do that, God will answer you in the mighty name of Jesus. There are situations that the enemy used to terminate the destiny of a man. You know these days, the devil is also wise. It comes through circumstances that if you are not spiritually inclined, you will not be able to quickly interpret and see that it is the enemy that is at work. I want you to lift up your voice. By the power in the name of Jesus, I terminate every power that has vowed to terminate my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh yes, by the power in the name of Jesus, I terminate every power that has vowed to terminate my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. I terminate it now in the name of Jesus. Every power that has vowed to terminate, oh yes, my destiny, I terminate it now. I believe you are praying in the mighty name of Jesus. Be terminated. Be terminated. Any power that has vowed to terminate my destiny, I terminate it now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Pharaoh was not walking alone. When we go back into the scripture, the Bible made us to understand that he had accomplices. He was working with wizards, sorcerers, magicians. In the same way, there are so many pharaohs in our place of study, in our place of work, in our community, who are not just ordinary human beings. They are agents of darkness, backed up by powers of wizardry, sorcery, black magics, and all sorts of things. This is the time to take a spiritual step against such powers and the spirit that is using such personalities. You will lift up your voice again as we pray. I command any wizard, sorcery or magician working with Pharaoh against me to be disgraced by the blood of Jesus. Oh yes, be disgraced by the blood of Jesus. I command any wizard, sorcerer, magician working with Pharaoh against me in my place of work, against my career, against my calling, in my community, in my place of habitation, be disgraced by the blood of Jesus. Be disgraced by the blood of Jesus. Be disgraced by the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, open your mouth, command them to disgrace, to be disgraced. Yes, any personality using the spirit of Pharaoh to attack me, let them be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Any wizard, any sorcerer, any magician that is working with Pharaoh in my place of habitation, in the community where I live, in the place where I work, let them be disgraced by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Any Pharaoh assigned to frustrate my life, be consumed by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Any Pharaoh, yes, that is a sign to frustrate my life, be consumed right now by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus, be consumed, be consumed by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus, be consumed by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus, oh yes, let them be consumed now. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Everything I've lost in the past due to the activities of the spirit of Pharaoh. Oh God, arise 
and restore it to me in double fold. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice. This is a prayer of restoration. Every good thing I've lost in the past due to the activities of the work, the activities of the spirit of Pharaoh in any area of my life. Father, let there be restoration in the name of Jesus. Let there be restoration. Let your amen be loud and resounding. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things underneath the earth. Father Lord, I join my faith with everyone under the sound of my voice now. And I speak against every spirit of Pharaoh behind depression that is bringing out suicidal thoughts, drunkenness, sexual immorality, drug addiction, distraction. I command them to be bound now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray every activities of the spirit of Pharaoh that has put anyone into captivity right now, let such activity be terminated, 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 be terminated in the name of Jesus. Any strange personality being used by the enemy that has become a taskmaster that is supervising affliction in the life of anyone under the sound of my voice now. The Bible says, O earth, O earth, O earth, hear the word of the Lord. I speak forth to you, earth. Open up and swallow up such taskmaster now in the name of Jesus. Swallow them now in the name of Jesus. I prefer that from today. Receive your freedom and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Walk into your promised land in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your voice and begin to thank God for the answered prayer. You can all be seated, please. Praise the Lord. A warm greeting of happy Easter to everyone, far and near. Let us please listen to some announcement that will be read out so that we learn more about our church. Offering time. It's time for offering. So let us put our offering together as the Lord has laid in our hearts. If you have your first fruits as well, you can still give it. And you can add it to the Sunday collection which is going to be done now. The Word of God encourages us in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10, and it says, Bring all your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. May that be our portion in the name of Jesus. For as many of you who have gathered your first fruits, your offerings, and your seed, please do raise it up and begin to thank God for what He has provided to you because it is Him, Jehovah Jireh, who has firstly provided. Let Him know that you are giving from your hearts. You are thankful, you are grateful, you are cheerful. And as you hold the seed, let us please all pray together with our eyes closed that, Father, Father, Thank you for the seed we are giving now. Let it be acceptable to you in the name of Jesus. Through this seed, we rebuke all form of devourer in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We have our Sunday bulletin. And if you don't have the soft copy, please do 
Raise up your hand. Let us know so that somebody in house would share with you the QR code and you would have it downloaded on your mobile device. Please do read it and you can use it as a tool of evangelism wherever you are. A warm welcome to everyone here from Light Path Church. If there's anyone that is worshipping with us for the very first time, please do raise up your hand. Hallelujah. I want to welcome this special brother in the house. If you are even chance, if you are near him, you can shake his hand and say, Welcome to Light Path Church. God bless you. To God be the glory. You are welcome to MFM Light Path Church in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we send you our warmest greetings wherever you are right now. Those online and those of us here. We believe that you have not coincidentally connected or worshipped with us today. It is a divine arrangement. And we pray that the power from above that established this church will locate your life and you will never remain the same. And we believe strongly that if you make this church your spiritual home and follow every instruction that the Lord gives, you will see a noticeable turn around in every situation of your life. We'll be happy to have a chat with you. So for those online, you can kindly call us on the number which we should give later on. And for you who are here, please stay a few minutes after the service so that we'll tell you more about the church, our programs, how we can help you on what you desire from the Lord. Once again, you are welcome home and may God bless you. All of us here, let us please take this prayer for our brother, this son of God that is here with us. And let us pray this way, that Father, we thank you for bringing this precious person. We pray that as he joined this family, it will be a turning point to more extraordinary things in this life in the name of Jesus. Father, for any of them who are yet to accept you as your Lord and Savior, we pray that you will visit them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Good news, good news, good news. We have good news regarding the food bank. It has already been announced for a couple of weeks now, but it's good to be reminded about this. I want to encourage everyone in-house to please donate items to the church food bank. The church food bank will use this item for various outreaches. And as usual, we invite you to donate non-perishable items and food items that have at least six months before the expiry dates. So now we're in the month of March, which is the third month of this year that is about to finish. So if you have items that are expiring like September, October, they are suitable to be donated. Anything shorter is best to consume them in your um, various houses. And may the Lord God bless you as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus. For our weekly activities, let us please pay some attention. The church has now a dedicated Sunday after the service which is used for counseling, corridor prayers and intercessory prayers. And this date is the second Sunday of every month the second sunday of every month so that means that the coming month of april which we are going in by the special grace of god the second sunday will be the sunday dedicated to an in-house counseling corridor and intercessory prayers with the pastors so for everyone who wants to take their time and to speak with the pastors and wants to join in prayers please take note of the dates so already look at your calendar so you know the second Sunday of this, of this coming month of April, which would be the time dedicated for prayer. And the time allocated is between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. So that means that after the service finishes, there will be these two hours dedicated for those who need prayer, counseling, and it is a one-on-one -on -one time for the pastors. 
So please, if you are here now, you can already let us know in advance so that the time will be allocated accordingly. And, you know, God will bless you as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus. We have the weekly Bible study which we do online and it is called In His Presence. It is the time that we use all together as Bible scholars to study about life issues under the perspective of the Word of God. And every Tuesday from 7.30 p.m. till 8.45 p.m. we meet online on Zoom. And it's the time we dedicate to study in particular the Word of God. And this past weeks, or I could even say this past months, we have been studying specifically the book of Isaiah, going in depth to understand the prophetic utterances and the visions that God has been giving to this prophet for his people that are still actual today. We have the past episodes which are recorded and you can go on YouTube to the past episodes, rewatch them and learn from them. You can also share the links to friends, colleagues, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. The details for joining the program are usually on our social media platforms and websites. And for those of us here who are already on the church database and you have subscribed to receive messages, um, we will send you a text message prompting you with a reminder of when and how to join the Bible study. As said earlier, it is from 7.30 p.m. UK time till 8.45 p.m. And it is every Tuesday. So please keep that in mind. Hallelujah. The MFM YC UK Council of Churches would be holding the yearly retreats, which is Bethel. Bethel is back to the glory of God. And for those of us who have good memories of it, I'm sure... You're looking forward to participate again this year. Bethel 2024 will be taking place from Monday the 19th to Thursday the 22nd of August. And the venue will be the Ashburnham Place, East Sussex. The postcode is TN339NF. You can take note of this address in case you're already wanting to participate. And the theme of this retreat this year is Revive. Revive. On the basis of the scripture found in Jeremiah 25, verse 6 to 7, and the book of Hosea, chapter 14, verse 4 to 8. So we encourage every one of us in here, those who want to participate, please book your time off work, book off your holidays in advance, you know, far before August, so that you can participate and plan together how to be part of it and soon as the details of how to register and the registration fee will be communicated to everyone the foundation class which is also known as the alpha class is for those of us who are yet to do water baptism by immersion in water so we encourage every one of you who want to take part of this foundation of class to please do let us know and this class will be primarily online it will be online so based on the timing and the availability there would be a timetable scheduled brought together for those of us who want to participate so please do let the pastors in house know about your desire to get water baptism so that you get registered and the timetable will be created purposely for you we have the church line, which is the prayer line, the phone number to use, and it is a line open 24-7. And if you want to pray to speak to someone, you can call this number, which is 079-585-99865. I'll repeat the number. It is 079-585-99865. To the glory of God, even though we are here, we are looking by faith for a permanent place of worship, a structure and a place where we can call our own place. So please, any of us who have information, you know people who are into properties and people who could even have information, 
please do not hesitate to let us know. We can all remember how the maid of that general was the one who gave him the solution to his problem. He was having leprosy. Even though the maid didn't have the power, but the maid knew of a prophet in Israel who could save this general. So the information you have, even though you might not know how to make things work, but you can let us know you've seen this advert, you've heard of this place, please let us know and also intercede and pray for God's divine mercy and favor. May you be blessed as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus. For every other announcement, please do keep an eye out and also subscribe to all of our online platforms. We have the Facebook page which is at MFM Light Path. The Instagram page is the same at MFM Light Path. X, which is the new name of Twitter, is at MFM Light Path. And we have the YouTube channel which is being used now live and direct for the streaming of this service and it is at MFM Light Path. May the Lord God continue to bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to use this occasion to be grateful to God and thank Him for how He has been good to us this far. So for just some few minutes, if there's anybody in-house who wants to use this time and this day to uh, share testimony, please do not hesitate to do so. You can gather your thoughts, gather your words together briefly. Uh, for anyone who wants to sing apologies, we would not be able to accommodate that probably at another time. But please, few words to thank God for his goodness in your life. Amen. Anybody in house who wants to do so? Hallelujah. Okay. Ladies first. Praise the Lord. We just wanted to say uh, thanks to God because he gave us another year with our life. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there's just been so many uh, blessings around us, uh, people close to us, even we must have gained new jobs and things like that. So God has really been blessing us. So we just want to thank God. No, more of the same, to be honest. Just want to thank God. <laughs> Adding another year into our lives and everything that he's done and everything he's about to do. We're just very, very grateful. Hallelujah. We bless God for their lives. God is good. God is merciful. For those of us who don't know, it might not be so easy to detect, but they are twins, brother and sister. So we give God the glory for their life as another year have been added to them. We pray that they shall continue to grow under the grace, mercy, and goodness of God. And they shall be useful vessels for the advancement of the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Any other person? Okay. Welcome. Uh. Welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, so I have a testimony, and I've waited till today to give the testimony, and I want to thank God for saving my life. I almost died, like, in February. So it started, like, I just went upstairs to use the restroom. Sorry, I'm very shy, so <laughs> bear with me. I went upstairs to use the restroom, and I felt this sharp pain, and from that pain, I couldn't move my body. From there to the hospital, to emergency surgery, I was in and out of the hospital for three times. Like, I cried, I, it was terrible. But I just thank God because even everything the doctor thought was wrong, they first said it was my kidneys, later they said my kidneys were okay, then they said I had a hole in my intestine, and they said it was okay, there was no hole. You know, everything they just thought was wrong was not wrong. And the same way the attack came, it went back the same way, you know. So it, sometimes I even wonder, okay, what actually happened during that time? Because I couldn't move my body. I couldn't wee for a month. They had to connect a catheter inside of me. 
like and the kind of pain i was feeling was excruciating i can't i cannot i cannot explain it the pain was like okay you know what let me just even die let me let it stop i couldn't breathe well i couldn't do anything and at that point i was not even thinking about my children i was just thinking about my life because it was like i was going to die you know so i just want to thank god go and sit down <laughs> I just want to thank God and I want to thank the pastors because they came to see me twice in the house and they prayed with me and I don't know what happened it's a miracle, I feel strong I feel like I didn't even go through any surgery like even when I got myself, I was like okay so what happened there was no logical explanation no science, even the doctors even, even after the surgery and they came and they said it's strange, we opened you up and we didn't see any hole, we didn't see anything we don't know what's going on and I said, don't worry, I know what's going on. I know it's going to go back the same way it came. And I'm happy that I'm here. All my organs are working perfectly. Everything is okay. When I was discharged the final day from the hospital, that was the third admission. And the doctors were happy because all, everything was normal. And they were like, you are free to go home. And I knew that was the end of the battle. So I want to thank God. It's been over a month. It's exactly a month now. No, I came out from the hospital first week of March. So it's almost a month now and I'm okay. There's no problem. Everything is perfect. So I just want you to I want you I want you to give God the glory for me for saving my life because he saved me. He gave me a new life. He gave me another chance to serve him and I promise to serve him all the days of my life. Somebody shout hallelujah. We want to thank God for what he's continuously doing in the life of our sister. We pray that what God has done is permanent. And we also pray that her family will always only hear good news in the mighty name of Jesus. Any other person in house who wants to show their gratitude? If there's nobody else, I want to thank God for the opportunity to be here once again to fellowship with the brethren i'm grateful to god for his mercy his goodness his protection and his favor in every area of my life and i want to give god the glory in advance for some expectations i have uh, for my own personal life this this year by the grace of god some people know some people are yet to know but to the glory of god we shall all testify of his goodness in my life and in your life as well in the mighty name of jesus so let us close our eyes and pray once more on the life of all of us who have testified and just for you all to know even though you have not come here to the front and held the mic we are all living testimonies of god's goodness so please remember that Jehovah Almighty, we want to thank you because you are merciful. You are merciful. You have granted more years of life to us. You have given the final say regarding health. You have sent back arrows that have been fired against us. And you are good to us, O oh Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We do not take for granted the life you have given unto us. And on this special occasion, on this special day, once more, we want to show our gratitude to you, our Master Jesus. Because you have saved us and you have made us to be sons and daughters of God. So you be all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. So as today is the last Sunday of this month, this third month, chapter 3 of 2023, we want to give thanks to God. And want to praise him for his grace to see, you know, today. Some of us have not been able to, to be here physically for one reason or the other. There are some people that we know that they are not using their lungs to breathe. It's machineries. There are some people who, you know, our, our sister have come to testify just now. But there are some people still, they are still in the hospital spending money to know what's wrong with them. So want to thank God. For those of us who earlier might have given their offering, I believe we have done so, right? We have all given our offering. Okay. So, want to invite our choir to come and lead us into a session of 
thanksgiving and praise and please for those of us who the lord god have given us strength in our feet and in our legs let us be standing because we are going to dance we are going to sing we are going to jubilate to the glory of god if you don't know the songs you can be dancing if you know the songs then you can be shouting and singing along hallelujah hallelujah amen Can we all rise up on our feet and worship the name of the Lord? Lift up your voice, lift up your heart and just worship the name of the Lord. Let's just take a moment to just reflect on what Jesus has done for us. It's because he died and rose again. That is why we have access to him. That is why we can sit and that's where we can relate with him. We can talk to him. We do not need to, you know, sacrifice bulls, rams like they used to do. We do not need to go to priests to be able to commune with God. We can freely access God. Let's just worship the name of the Lord because he's good. He's, he's worthy to be praised. Whatsoever situation, whatsoever circumstance you think you're going through now, the mere fact that you are alive is just a valid reason to worship the name of the Lord. In one moment, please lift up your voice and worship the name of the Lord. Worship the name of the Lord. Call him names. He has a lot of names. Just call him the ones you can remember, the ones you cannot remember. If you can pray in the worship in, in the spirit, open your mouth and worship God. For the breath of life you've given unto us. Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you for our hearts. Thank you because our minds are stayed on you. Lord Jesus, we say thank you. Lord Jesus, we say thank you. We cannot thank you enough. Thank you for protection. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In in, in comfortable with, we say thank you. In circumstances that we are not comfortable with, we say thank you. Lord Jesus, we say thank you. Lord Jesus, we say thank you. You are the God. You are God. You've never failed. You will never fail. What you say you will do. Lord Jesus, we say thank you. Glory, honor, and adoration be unto your name. In the name of Jesus. There is a language that And I am privileged to join them sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
of your voice again to worship the name of the Lord. He's greatly to be praised. Let them both give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks Thank you, man. 
Set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. for the payment of blood. We thank you for the life of Christ. We thank you because in that while we are yet sinners, Christ chose to die. We thank you because even at the third day, you rose again. We thank you for delivering us even from the power of death. We thank you for removing every condemnation and every signature of death upon our lives. We say be thou exalted, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, this morning we ask that even as we look into your word, you let there be utterance in the name of Jesus. Even as the word is like armor, let it break to pieces every stronghold that exalts itself against the knowledge of God in our lives in the name of Jesus. We ask that the word that renews, the word that redefines, let it flow through us in the name of Jesus. At the end of this service, Lord, make a great name for yourself in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Good morning, everyone, once again. I want to appreciate the assembly pastor for another opportunity to speak to the people of God. And I do not take it for granted. And so this morning, just in the season of what we are celebrating, or what is being celebrated, I want to charge us, a very short charge, on the cross. On the cross. Can we open our Bibles quickly to... The book of John 8. John 8. Just a short charge on the cross.
John 8. So even though we all would have known that Christ rose after three days of death from great torture and what have you, the whole essence of that event would make no much meaning to us if we as individuals who he lay down his life for do not appropriate that which he has accomplished for us. John 8, and this is a story just to paraphrase from verse 1 to verse 9. This was, this was a story of a, of a woman caught in the act of adultery. For benefit of doubt, let me just read. John 8 verse 1. It says, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman caught in adultery. And when he had set her in the midst, they said, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in his law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what seest thou? Verse 6. This they said, tempting him that they might have that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up his voice and said unto them, He that is without sin amongst you, let him cast the first stone at her. Verse 8. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. We see that reference for in the midst also in verse 3. Verse 10 and 11, which is the point of emphasis. It says, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are, thou, where are those thine accusers? At no man condemned thee. And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. And when I began to read the scripture, verse 10 and 11 took my attention. They brought someone to Jesus that was caught in the act of adultery. Not it was not a year, it, it was not a year say they caught her in the act of adultery and they brought her to Jesus. And verse 10, Jesus was asking a question. He says, Where are thine accusers? When when you catch someone in the very act and there's first hand evidence, you are not accusing that person again. It is an established fact. But what Jesus was trying to point out to us here is that so long as that woman was in the midst of Jesus, every accusation was null and void. And so when we want to see the work that Christ has done for us, you know, Romans 12 says, there is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. And so regardless of anything that we may have done or things that might have happened, so long as we are in the midst of the Lord, there is no... There's no accusation. He also asks, where are they that have condemned thee? There is also no condemnation. And verse 11 also gives an instruction for us to pay attention to. He said, and she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And so when Jesus tells her to go and sin no more, is a verdict of go and do not continue to walk in the flesh. And so as we begin to look at this morning on the matter of the cross, the cross becomes an important thing for us to, to pay attention to because the matter of the cross came only as a result of an intervention. 
Because man was part of a rebellion against God. And so, for God to, to remedy the situation, God had placed man as a, in a position of rulership and dominion. But then, man was part of a rebellion, and we see from Genesis how that rebellion happened. And man lost his rights. And you remember, even in the law, there was an instruction to say that whosoever the soul that sins must die. And so God was in a position of protecting his integrity, even with man. Because if he had said those who sin must die, Romans 8 also establishes that. It says, for the wages of sin is death. And so even from the realm of God, we begin to see that with God, once he says something, it does not change. That thing needs to be fulfilled. And so because he had bound himself by that word that whosoever sins must die, there was a need for an intervention through the penalty that Christ came to pay for us. You know, last week we were somewhere in London and listening to our mother and the Lord. And she made a, a remark. She said, in the spirit realm, there is no respect in the spirit realm. And so if an old woman appears to you in the spirit realm, you, can't, you don't need to be greeting her that, good evening, my good, no. It is a, a field of battle. And so anything you do to that individual would not be termed as being rude because that is another realm. And as I began to think on that matter, it made me also realize that in the realm of God, or let's, let's say in the realm of spirit, there is no such thing as forgiveness. There is no such thing as forgiveness. And so the only way we can obtain forgiveness is if we tap into the intervention of the cross. And so when God had given that commandment that whosoever sins must die, there needed to be a plan worked out. And God in his wisdom with the Holy Spirit decided to send Jesus, sending him through the Virgin Mary. And when you read Matthew, Matthew says, if they had known, if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the God of glory, the Lord of glory. And so that intervention that Christ came to achieve was to remedy that rebellion that happened ab initio. And so when we begin to see Christ come to die, you know, Christ was in a particular place and he did some miracle. He raised the dead, he healed the sick. And they wanted to make him the king of that community. And scripture says he ran away. Because why? He knew why he came. There is a verdict upon man that didn't to be taken out. Because if that didn't happen, we are all doomed. And so, he says, if the princes of this world had known what God was planning, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And so when Jesus came, there were, there were opportunities for him to even be freed from any condemnation or from any persecution. But he, he, he made himself, Philippians 2 says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Who though being God, he says, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation and he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And so, when any man will want to ask for forgiveness, of course, we see that Jesus died. And he didn't just die. It was not just for those of us that have watched Passion of the Christ. We would have seen some very gory events and pictures from that movie. It was, not, it was an excruciating pain because he paid even with his blood. And so, for God's wrath to be abased, or for God's wrath, you know, I said that the spirits, they don't forgive. So once you have done something wrong, you can even still continue. But if there is a punishment for what you have done, you will still enjoy that punishment. And so we see that Christ then died. And the reason for his death was to appease God's judgment. And so today, if any man will come to ask for forgiveness, you will go under the covering of Christ. Why? Because it was Christ himself that took upon him the form of a servant and he was obedient unto death. And so if we are going to be seeking any forgiveness, even in our lives today, it will be that we will go on that Christ. And so what does the cross 
signify for us? I'll just mention a few points and I'll tie it up there. The cross, as I said, is a form of intervention that made salvation possible to all mankind. Man was put in a realm that needed continuous development. But man thought that his existence was meant for pleasure alone. And he was expelled out of the Garden of Eden. And when you read very well, even expelling man from the Garden of Eden was an act of love. Because if, if man had remained like that, God, if you, if you read Genesis 3 to 5, I think, he says, let us cast him out of this place because he has now become like us. So if man had still, if, if man had been left there, man would have been internally corrupt. He would not have been redeemable again. And that's the situation with the devil. You can't, you can't redeem the devil. Or he's not even, you can't, there's nothing you can, there's no amount of intercession you can do to the devil. Why? Because he's not redeemable. Because he rebelled in a state of a spirit. And so in the spirit realm, anything that you do, that's why sometimes you notice that you are sleeping and you cannot move your body, you cannot do anything. It's because that realm is, a, is, a, is different people that play on that realm. And so we see that Satan himself cannot be redeemed again. But man had to be taken out of Garden of Eden just so that he can be redeemed. Why? Because the dominion or the initial plan of God for man was so that he has dominion and rulership over everything. On the cross, we see that the anger of God was distilled. On the cross, we see that the anger of God was distilled. And so, Christ going to die on the cross was for one goal. So that man can be reconciled back to God. And there is no such thing as he dying alone. It would have been incomplete. There are so many people in, in scripture then that proclaim themselves to be Messiah or to be, to, be, to be the prophet. They died and they never returned. But when you read the book of Matthew, over and over again, Jesus made mention. He says, destroy this temple and I will bring it up in three days. And so he was so certain about his return. And so when we look at the cross, what do we again begin to see? We begin to see the place where God would have every man start his journey of eternity from. Romans 7. Let's open our Bibles to Romans 7. Romans 7, I read from verse 1 to 4. Romans 7 from verse 1 to 4. He says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak unto them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Verse 2. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by law to her husband. So long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Verse 3. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. For if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress. Though she be married to another man. Verse 4. Wherefore, brethren. Now, all what he said in verse 1 to 3. This was the point he was trying to push. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also have become dead to the law by the body of Christ. That ye should be married to another. Even to him who is raised from the dead. That we should bring forth fruit unto God. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him that is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. And so we see that our marriage after that rebellion was one with the flesh, because man had obeyed the promptings of the flesh. And scripture says, whosoever ye yield yourselves to, to that you are servant unto. 
And so we were married to the flesh. And so last week we were speaking about offenses. And so the issue about getting angry, getting displeased about certain things is because we are married to the flesh. And until death happens, and when I say death now, I actually mean two deaths, physical death or, or death by the cross. If a man is poor, if a man is angry, if a man has lost, if that man dies physically now, all those things will leave him. Do you agree? So also with the cross. If a man appropriates the benefits of the cross, all those things ought to die with him and should die with him. And so when people say, in this world, nobody can be perfect. We are just trying our best. <laughs> that statement may need to be rechecked very well. Why? Because if people are waiting for the physical death to happen before they are freed from the flesh, it has a danger because when death happens, the next event that a man faces is called judgment. And so he says it is appointed unto man to die once and after that judgment. Not necessarily that you will go into judgment because you need to wait for other people. Is that the next event that is happening to that fellow is that you should face judgment. And so physical death or spiritual death will end. Sorry, physical death or death, but is reckoning with what Christ has done for us, would help us to be separated even from the works of the flesh. You see in verse 4, it says, Wherefore, my brethren, ye have become dead to the law. Ye have become dead to the law. By what? By the body of Christ. We have become dead to the law by the body of Christ. And so it says that ye should be married to another. And so when we have become dead to the body, to the body of Lord, rather, and we are married to Christ, even to him who is raised from the dead, and the goal is that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Verse 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the Lord, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, being dead. That being dead, wherein we were held, we should now serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. I'll just mention three further points about the cross and we'll begin to pray from there now. As we see from Romans 7, it appears as though except we come to this cross, we are, we are forever bound to, this, to, the, to the law. We are forever bound to sin. And it is only because Christ has now gone to that cross. That is why there is an injunction for every one of us to also go to that cross. Any man that starts his Christian journey, not starting from this position, you will, you will see a, a mixed multitude in that lifestyle. You may have, the person may have been in ministry for 15 years, 20 years. If he does not start from this point of the cross, he still has not done much for himself. Our, rep, our response to the flesh is a law, not by choice. And that is because we are married to the flesh. And Romans was saying that except that flesh, except we, we put it to death, we cannot be married to God. And so you say you want to accept the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. But then you are still married to the flesh. And he says, for that person, you are an adulteress. Regardless of who you are being married to, whether it is to God or not, you are still an adulteress. Because flesh must be put to death. We are dead to the law by the body of Christ. As I said earlier, anyone can be free from anger, from lust. When they die physically. The limitation with this is that the next event awaits that fellow is the judgment. We can't do much if we are still married to the flesh. Only death resolves this matter. We cannot do much for the Lord if we are still married to the flesh. Only death resolves this matter. The cross is God's instrument to get rid of our former husband, the flesh. 
The cross is God's instrument to get rid of our former husband, the flesh. And so if we'll be having any sustainable or enduring journey in our Christian work, it will be that we will go to the cross and check what God or what Christ did on that cross and appropriate it in our lives. He says, he made he who knew no sin to be sin for us. And so when Jesus, or when God rather, looks at us, he is not looking at us from the position of sinners. Why? Because one has taken that, that load. And so when we come to God, we must come believing that he is our Lord. And that is only because of what Christ has done. Ephesians 2 that we sang earlier. That saved by grace alone. This is all my plea. Jesus suffered and died. And Jesus died for me. And so we see that the cross appears to be a valve. That blocks the life of the flesh. Any man that goes to the cross. The life of the flesh is blocked. Is, is, is stopped from living. For a man that dies physically. The general verse here one made this illustration. Yeah, somebody is fighting loss, is fighting loss, and that man eventually dies. He says, now, arrange maybe naked people in front of that man. He will not move. Why? Because he's dead. And so that is what death to the flesh ought to accomplish for us. And this thing do not just come at the inst For some people, it comes at the instance of accepting the power of the cross. For some, it might take some time. But the thing is that when we yield to the power of the cross, we see that the flesh life is subdued and there is a release of the spirit life from, from our being. 2 Corinthians 4.10 2 Corinthians 4.10 2 Corinthians 4.10 I read verse 10 and 11. And I want us to look into our Bibles as we all look through this. And so, even as we, we, even as we celebrate today, it's important that we, we understand the essence of all of the celebration going on around. 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 11. It says, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For which, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. And so we see that if the cross is not applied to our lives in a daily manner, we would have a mistaken identity. You know, you see some people, you can't, you can't really say, even though they are coming to church, you can't really say, ah, this person... Can we say he's a Christian? Can we say he's not a Christian? Of course, we know these things are in the art, but because we, we don't have microscope to look into your art, there are these some metrics we need to see. And so, when you see people with mistaken identity, it will be that the cross, they are not carrying that cross daily. You know, Jesus went to meet some fellows, and he says, come, follow me. And those ones said, I just married a, a new wife. I need to spend some time with her. Jesus said, okay, no problem, go. Another one said, I just bought a new land. I want to go and check it. And Jesus in Luke 9, 23 says, Whosoever will not deny himself and carry his cross daily. It's a daily thing. And follow me. He says, it's not worthy. And so when we see instructions in scripture, just like we're seeing last week, for the matter of forgiving our brothers, it was an injunction to carry a cross daily that we must forgive 70 times 7 in a day. And so it is, a, it, is, it is an injunction to put to death the voice of the flesh. Many have been involved for a long time in church and perhaps even in ministry without starting, starting out on this coordinate point, the cross. The journey to heaven is more clear and more precise for a man that starts at this location. Our certificate of death and death was destroyed at this point. Colossians 2, 14 
to 15. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary unto us. And why was that contrary unto us? was because a man went to that cross already for us. And so there is no need for us to die again physically. Why? Because Christ took upon him that burden. The cross is the power of God. It's not just a means to the power of God. 1 Corinthians, this same 1 Corinthians 1.18. I'm bringing it to a close now. 1 Corinthians 1.18. You know, when we begin to think about the cross, it, it, it helps us to be reasonable in our dealing. When we begin to think about the cross, it helps us to be reasonable in our dealing. Because we'll begin to judge ourselves. Second Corinthians 5, it says, the love of God, the love of Christ constrains us. Knowing that if one died for all, then we which were now alive, we should no longer live for ourselves but to live for him that has died for us. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. What does it say? It says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. And so a man may have started out in being a church worker, maybe 10 years ago. And it does not, have you found out, I've seen different people in my life. You find somebody, you are in a group and there's somebody in your group. And this person, he just lies. He's not, you, don't, you know, so, so sometimes when you want to, some people don't, they don't respond to your comment or they don't say anything because they don't want to lie. But you find somebody that is in the fold and they just ask him a question, he will just drop the thing. And you, when you see those people, you begin to wonder that did these ones did they start from this location? Because when you start from that location of the cross, it it constrains you. Rather than lie, you will just confess, because there is a constraining force that it brings upon you. And so we see that for those who are perishing, it is foolishness, and so they can trivialize it. That cross, don't worry, I will ask for forgiveness. And the thing with that is because you don't know when death will happen. So if you live your life of um, always taking from forgiveness, from forgiveness, the day death will happen, you are not certain. Of course, we don't pray for untimely death. But wisdom demands that at every point when our maker might come, we have found faith. It says when the, when the Lord come, will he still find faith? And that faith is as a noun, not as a verb. Meaning that there will be faithfulness. You will still find faith on the earth. You will still find faith in the lives of the individuals. Galatians 6.14 If we are to make any boast, regardless of whatsoever we have, let's look at Galatians 6.14 Can we read together? But God forbid... That I should glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. And so Paul was writing this thing. Paul was a scholar. For, you, for those that don't know. Paul understood various language. And he was, he was one of the top leaders in the Pharisee sect. And so when you bring matters of the law, Paul understood those things. Paul was well educated. And so he could come to boast that I have this thing. But he says, no. All my boast will be on that cross. And so in Philippians 3.10, he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable even unto his death. And so our only basis for boasting as believers is in the cross. You don't boast that, ah, you have this, you bought three houses. No. Because if you understand the cross, even though those things are good, it's not as if they are not good. They are good. But the only thing we are, we are allowed to boast about is knowing the cross of the Lord. And so if a Christian will boast about anything he has accomplished for himself, it will be that he is boasting in the cross. 
And by the time they now dovetail it down, they now say, oh, okay, this Christian, he has these other things. But our only boast is in the cross. Three areas that the cross would accomplish for us. Number one, the cross helps us to walk in love. Because we need this to be able to relate with men appropriately. The cross helps us to walk in love. And the way we can extract from the cross this potential is by communion. The way we can extract the ability to love the unlovable is by communion. So if we do not commune enough, there is no way we can, we can be transformed. When we, reach, when we read 1 Corinthians 13, there are some characteristics of love. And this thing I'm saying, even for the preacher, is a continuous thing. It's not as though anybody has reached that level yet, no. So it will be that we are communing with him. Not just believing that, okay, he has died, fine. That's good enough. But what are you making do with that thing he went to do? Because he said, they that are of Christ should know that they no longer live for themselves, but live for the one that has died and also risen from the dead. And so, the cross helps us to walk in love. And as I said, the way we extract this potential from the cross to be applied in our lives is our communion. When we realize that we, we commune with God each time, we engage with God each time. Some things that previously, a long time ago, I believe it was, it was, it was a very bad habit. I, I had the gift of, <laughs> it was a wrong gift too, of always keeping to myself. I don't want to call it malice because it's not really malice, but it looks like malice too. So when we are not in talking terms, I'm, I'm okay. As in nothing is, I don't feel like something is wrong with me. So we don't, you know, then we're living with some people then. For like three years, we will be taking the same stairs. We will not say LOI. And they will give us tax. We will do the tax together. But it was a nature that was operated by the law. But you see, when you become to know Christ, you realize that uh, this thing is wrong. It begins to bring it to you. And that, is, that comes from communion. Also, when I was in school, I used to be secondary school, not university. I used to be part of those people that used to form Votron. And I was not, I was not looking for answers. I was a distributor. You, you know, when, people, when you don't have people that don't know anything, you, you have some people that, okay, just we position ourselves. So when this guy needs the answer, you give it to him. But when you now realize that there is a cross, I realized this, I think, in my year two. And I lost a few friends because of that. So when I'm going to the exam hall, I'm going to the front to go and sit down where the invigilator is facing me, so that in case you call me, I will not even listen. And we'll come out from example, ah, Toby, we called you, we called you, you did not answer. It's not my fault. It's because something has, has started to happen. So if it is not, and I realized that it was not even in me helping my colleague to pass the exam. If they didn't read, it's funny, but they will come and write it again next year. But it is, their passing is not in me. So that time I was doing distribute, and I was thinking I was doing good. But you realize that when you come to encounter the cross, every falsehood, you put it down. Number two, the cross produces life. John 6, 63. You know, the disciples of Jesus, they left, they were about to leave him and okay, some people deserted him. And he asked the disciples, he says, will you also desert me? And he says, why shall we go away? Because only you have the words of life. Your words are spirit and they are life. And so we need the cross to produce life in us. To be able to preserve us even from spirits. I said earlier, in the spirit realm, there is no respect. And so we need the cross, the power of the cross to produce life in us. So that when a contrary spirit comes against us, because there is life in us. If you remember the story of Paul, he's in the aisle, one aisle now that the guy went... I think they, were, they, were, they escaped from a shipwreck and they picked up woods to gather wood and a viper beat Paul. And the people were saying that he will soon die, he will soon die, let's watch him. And he says, Paul just shook the viper away. And they waited, nothing happened to him. And they said, nah, this one is God. They, I think they named him, is he Zeus or something? It's because Paul had life in him. The cross was not just a mental picture. That cross, it has produced life in him. 
And the way you produce life from the cross is to die. And so you are married. Your, your spouse angers you today. You will die. Because except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abided still. But when it dies, it brings forth much fruit. And so even you think, I should give her a response. So she will know what she's doing is not good. What that thing is meant to work in you is death. And so when Paul says, I die daily, it means that he wants a life to be produced in him. So when men of God says they were just passing, and somebody in the environment, they, are, they said, ah, Dr. Lukoya is passing. He did not see Dr. Lukoya and he received daily. It's because life, life, life is emitting from him. And so you are speaking to people. They don't even know why. You see? I want to give my life to Christ. I want to be sure. It's because life is emitting from you. Finally, the cross produces light. And the way we see light come out is in our beholding. The cross produces light. And the way we see light fall out of us is our beholding. Scripture says, and as we behold, as in a glass, we are changed. Can we bow down our heads? Know ye not that you were bought with a price? Glorify therefore God in your mortal body. The essence of what Christ has done for us has many potentials. If we key into it, his resurrection has so many potentials. If we key into it, We need to go back to the place of the cross. For those that started out, not starting from this location. And you have, you have enshrined falsehood into your journey. Ask God for help this morning. Except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides. But if it dies, it produces much more fruit. Peradventure, you're watching us online. You're in this room this morning. And you know that of a truth, you have been living for the flesh. Remember, he says, no man can say he's married to another. If he's still married to the flesh, he says that person is an adulteress, is an adulterer. Peradventure, you're watching this morning and you know that Christ is not Lord. You have trampled under feet the work of his death. You have trampled under feet the significance of his death and even his resurrection. It is time to come home this morning. And I want to begin to ask that if you fall under that category that you did not, you have not found the Lord. You have not found the Lord. Perhaps you are watching this now or you would watch later. I want you to come to the Lord this morning. It is appointed unto man to die once, and after that, he faces judgment. Let's ask, for those in that category, you said this short prayer with me in your heart. The Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my heart this morning. Let the work, the accomplished work of Christ, let it be seen in my life. Help me to live above sin. Help me to live above the works of the flesh help me to walk in the newness of life write my name in the book of life help me to, to carry my cross daily, daily, daily daily as I live often as I breathe let my whole life be an expression of your grace if you said that short prayer in your heart, please I would want to beg you to please find a way to reach out to us. And if you are in this auditorium, please reach out to one of our ministers even before you leave here today. Oh, for as I breathe, let my life be expressions of your grace. For those in this auditorium, and you know that, of course, you are a Christian. You started out with good intention. But by the time we check you now, you are far from that cross. The Lord wants you to, to find that point back. Find that coordinate back again. If you have built your life on falsehood, 
ask the Lord for help this morning. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh. I live in the faith of the Son of God who died and gave himself for me. Ask the Lord for help this morning. Lord, help my life to appropriate the potentials of the cross. To be able to produce love for men. Help my life to appropriate the potentials of the cross. To be able to walk in love. To be able to walk in light. To be old and to commune. All of the days of my life. I want to believe you are praying. Ask the Lord for help this morning. Except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. He says it's abide. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. The way up first is death. And so if we will see anything produced out of our life, we must first reckon with the death of a Christ. And then live now unto even his resurrection. Make sure you are praying. I believe you are still praying. From the depth of your heart. The way up is for us to go down on our knees and in our hearts. That is the only way up and to stay up. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I want us to lift up our voice and pray for all the vessels that God has used for us today. And the vessel that God has used for us in the ministration of the word. That the oil of God on their life, on his life, would not run dry in the mighty name of Jesus. That God will continually increase in all their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Can we all rise up as we are bringing the service to an end now? And I want you to lift up your voice and begin to speak forth, particularly into this new month we'll be going to in the next few hours the Lord let your resurrection power go ahead of me into the new month of April let every good thing in my life that has died resurrect by your resurrection power in the name of Jesus just as the stone was rolled away from the tomb let every obstacle to my greatness testimony, celebration be rolled away right now as I move into this new month in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice now that Lord, that you will lift up their heads in the name of Jesus that the hand of the enemy will not reach them in the mighty name of Jesus that as they step into this new month it shall be from glory to glory in the name of Jesus where they have no voice you will raise a voice for them in the mighty name of jesus i pray for anyone that any case file has been opened against spiritual or legally or that lord we close such files and cases now in the mighty name of jesus anyone with any documents being said anywhere bearing this or name and identity they still must let the favor of God overshadow and cover such documents in the mighty name of Jesus. Where you have been rejected, this very hour, you will be accepted in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, every form of rejection, frustration in this new month will stand against it right now in the name of Jesus. And I decree into your life that by the power of resurrection, 
that the joy of Lord will resurrect in your heart, in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. That the assurance of God will locate your life in the mighty name of Jesus. No more discouragement in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I pray that the Lord will protect you in the mighty name of Jesus. The powerful hand of God will overshadow you in the mighty name of Jesus. The joy of resurrection shall always be yours in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can we share the grace collectively as a church? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go and win with Jesus. God bless you.